<clears throat> Man, what is up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Vance Barnes Pie. You already know what it is. I am him. He is me, your host, Glitch in the Matrix. Vance Barnes, man. Appreciate y'all tapping in. Episode, we 40 deep. I know I say it every podcast how deep we are, but it's, I this is crazy. Like, I honestly, when I started it, my goal was to hit 52 podcasts. 52, one for each week in the year, um, just to show myself that I could for consistency, not to give up and just to go for a year straight. Now that we 40 deep, feels like I've grown a lot. Feels like the podcast has definitely grown a lot, but it, uh, it definitely feels like we're still getting started. Like it feels like I'm not even, I'm not even close to where we want to be at. Um, as far as content quality, all that stuff. But you know, when I first started it, like I said, it was just just to start to keep going no matter what like just hey let's hit 52 and see where it happens and um yeah we're 40 deep so we got 12 more to go uh till we reach that milestone and then you know we'll hit the next milestone but first i want to start off saying that man it feels like sometimes it feels like we just live in a simulation like it's so crazy like the past week we got the current president, did y'all see that video of Biden, like, forgetting? I know there's tons of videos of him, like, on social media that go every week, honestly. It's just, like, something new of him just showing, like, his age, like, showing how old he is. And that's why I say it feels like we just live in a simulation with, like, ever since 2020, it's just been crazy. Like, this man Biden is too old to remember whose hand he shook. Like, y'all see that video of him shaking dude's hand Dude made his rounds to shake the other people's hands on the stage, and then he turns back, and Biden, like, has his hand out again because he, like, forgot that he already shook his hand. And I seen a, a video of him, like, basically couldn't put on his, his suit jacket. Like, he had to get help. And I'm just like, man, dude, this is... At what point do we have, like, an age limit on <laughs> who can enter the office? You know what I mean? Like, it's just... It's it's ridiculous. Um and then we got the former president, his house is just getting raided. That's that's crazy, too, because a lot of people, like it wasn't that big of a story. Like, it was big, but that's, like, the craziest thing to happen to one of, like, a former president or president, and it, like, was barely even talked about, you know. And not to get into all that, I'm just saying, like, that, like, that is... Do you guys ever feel like we're just like living in like you're just like looking around like yo what is happening in the world right now like what is like what is going on like we got former presidents getting raided by the FBI we got current presidents too old to remember how to even put on a suit jacket and then we got this monkey pox thing going around man it's just it's crazy it's wild times but hey that's the world we live in I guess I guess there's not a lot of shock factor within a lot of things anymore just because of I don't know. I feel like social media has given us so much more access to things and it's shown us so much more that it's just like we don't even flinch when certain things happen. Like I said, like when I can imagine in the 70s or 80s when that like Richard Nixon um, Watergate scandal went on and how just big of a deal that was. Um, I, re- I remember when I, we were kids when I was a kid and Obama had wore like a brown or tan suit and it was like a huge deal on, in the media for so long. Just and like little like Watergate scandal wasn't little, but like a little thing like the suit color um, was such a big deal. And now we live in such an age where like media and content and news is always hitting us constantly. Um, and we just there's we're kind of it just kind of falls on deaf ears. It's like almost expected at this point. Um, you know, it's just wild times, but hey, get off that, get onto the topic of the day so far, um, or the topic of the week. And I know last week we talked about it a little bit with having the right mental approach and mindset when facing adversity. Right. And I think that for me personally, like I mentioned last pod, like when the pandemic hit and I just really wanted to dive deep into a certain subject, I did. And 
you know, having that bright mindset, especially especially when facing adversity, because I came off a year where 2019, I transferred schools, um, you know, had to sit out a year because of, you know, something that was out of my control. The, the school that I transferred to missed the compliance, missed the NCAA rule. They didn't see it. They didn't catch it. Um, so I had to sit out because of something that they did wrong or that they missed. Um and then, you know, going through that, seeing that a whole season, then transferring to another school, getting that break, um, finally being able to play my senior season, and then COVID hits. COVID takes that away and having to sit out a whole nother season. But then, you know what I mean? Like, I had faced all this adversity, so I had to be like, man, like, Vance, how do you get your mental right? Like, what am I? Like, I, I felt like I had gone through so much in the last two years of my life at that moment where I was like, man, I got to make sure that my mental is right. I got to make sure that. I'm on top of my game so that, you know, when we hit the ground running, when everything's back up, like we can, like I said, we can just hit the ground running. We don't have to miss any steps. We don't have to miss any, miss anything. Um, And that came from the mental aspect of it. Because like I said in the last pod, like I always knew like the physical, putting in the physical hours sometimes is the easiest part of our lives. Like sometimes putting in those physical hours can be easy but how do we get the mental side the mental side of things sometimes is what you know we struggle with and it is something that like i said i struggled with so i had to dive deep into it so you know ever since i've been on this journey understanding you know been on this journey of trying to understand just life in general you know early this year i came across the stoic philosophy now what does the stoic philosophy truly mean well the stoic philosophy when people think like when you think of the word stoic and people that are stoic you think of almost like oh they're nonchalant like people that don't care but i don't that's not that's not necessarily it you know what i mean um so the stoic philosophy is one that came about thousands of years ago um started bc but I came across this philosophy because I was like, man, how do you attack things with a mindset when there's so many things coming at you? You know what I mean? How are you able to, how, how can I able to keep a level head and have a great approach to life when there's so many things that are hitting me at once, when it can be hard to, you know, keep that, keep a positive mindset and keep a positive mindset and keep going. So that's the hardest part. Like I said, the mental aspect of keep going, not giving up is, is tough. So I came across this philosophy, the Stoic philosophy. And basically, the core of Stoicism is, you know, the definition of acceptance and indifference. You know, having this kind of approach to life that, you know, hey, whatever happens, it is what it is. Simply because we don't have much control over what happens in our lives we do have control over our reactions though that being said you know the most important principle of stoicism is the dichotomy of control you know separating what you can control and separating what you cannot control because the truth is is that we have power over our minds right we have power over our reaction to things, but we don't have power over, you know, what happens in our lives. You know, for example, we all set out, we set out for goals, right? We have goals in this life and we have things that we want to accomplish. And if you're anything like me, sometimes you get so caught up in those goals, you get so caught up in achieving these things that you sometimes forget to think about the journey, right? Right. You sometimes forget to think and appreciate the small things and the small wins on the way because you're just like, man, I need like this goal is something I set. I set for a reason. And you're like in in your mind, in my like, you know, what I mean, in your mind, you're thinking like if I do everything right, that I can still can I can still control this outcome of what the goal may be or what the outcome of the goal is, you know? which is extremely false because we we have all these goals right and we can control everything leading up to the goals we can control 
you know, our work ethic, how much we study about our craft. We can control, you know, the amount of hours that we put into it. We can control all these things leading up to, you know, what it is that we want to do. But essentially, what happens if we do not obtain it? You know what I mean? Like, what happens if we don't obtain that goal? Because that's just life sometimes. You can have a goal of getting into a certain med school and you can do everything right. You can get a 4.0 GPA. You can, you know, control how much you study, control the right people, connections you make, uh, the right cover letters you write. You know, you can control all these aspects of the thing. But at the end of the day, if that medical school comes and says, hey, we're full, um, you know, try again next year and you still don't get in. Like, you know what I mean? It, I've seen it. You know, I've seen it happen where people, they don't get into the dental school they want. They don't get into the med school they want. Um, they don't get the job they want. You don't accomplish your dream on the first go around. I've, I've experienced that firsthand. What happens when we don't obtain that goal? When we can control everything that we could have controlled and still the outcome isn't what we wanted. Well, that's where the stoic, that's where the stoic philosophy comes in. And I'm going to explain, you know, the stoic philosophy a little bit doing a lot of research over it the last you know especially the last six months because it was something that i feel like i, I really needed and it's it's not an easy i'm it's not an easy philosophy to go about it's not an easy lifestyle to to, to live just because we're as humans we're so emotionally involved in our craft and our passions but it's just saying like what is the right mindset you know to approach life you know, it doesn't mean that your goal in any way is gone just because you didn't obtain it. It just means that maybe it's postponed, you know. So I want to read this quote real quick by Lucius Seneca. He says, we suffer more in imagination than we do in reality. We suffer more in imagination than we do in reality because you think think about all the times like you're stressing right you're stressing over something that you can't control or you're stressing over something that hasn't happened yet right and that's where he says it's it's all up here it's all in your imagination because if you looked at your reality if you looked at your um your actual reality it is and that's what we talked about in the last pod too is that and you guys hear me drop it a lot is that sometimes our perception isn't reality. I just said, like, if you don't catch your goal on the first time around, doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that it's some, it's postponed. And you just obviously couldn't control the timeline of it. You know, if you get discouraged off the first go around because you didn't make it, like, are you just going to give up? Like, how do you, how do you keep going? How do you keep approaching life with that? With a similar with a mindset of like I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep doing this thing. So first I wanna talk about the father of stoicism, Zeno. So Zeno, quick story actually, when he was first studying stoic stoicism, so they call him the father of stoicism, father of this philosophy. When he was first studying stoicism, he was following this mentor, this leader that he had, and he had spilled a pot of soup all over him, right? So you can imagine back way before technology, way before all that stuff, he had spilled a pot of soup on him, got all over him, and he ran away. Like he was so embarrassed in front of all these people that he just spilled all this soup on him. He's dirty. He's got to go clean up. He ran away. And his teacher yells out to him. He goes, you know, why run away? Nothing terrible has befallen you. So his teacher was was telling him, like, why are you, like, embarrassed? Like, what is there to be embarrassed about? You, you spilled some soup on you. And he talks about, you know, this. And it just kind of got to my mindset of, like, you know, our parents always told us when we were little, like, we don't cry over spilled milk. You know, there's simply nothing to be embarrassed about in this moment and his teacher was trying to tell him that and that's like a little bit of the stoic philosophy of being like okay this event happened to me it's not very ideal i don't really you know didn't want this outcome to happen but it did and 
you know, hey, it is what it is. It doesn't mean that it's good. It doesn't mean that it's bad. And I think that with this, with this mindset, this philosophy of being like, okay, it is what it is. It's not good. It's not bad. It just is. Let's just let it exist how it is. Sometimes we don't know what God is saving us from, right? We don't know what the world, what the universe is saving us from, from these things happening. For example, we get so pissed off when there's traffic, right? We get so pissed off when we don't hit certain lights, when we're feeling like we're catching every red light. But we don't know what the universe is saving us from. We simply don't know, you know, what car accident is up ahead. We don't know if all we would have, you know, taken this, if we would have beat this late, who would have ran the, the, the stop sign, you know, two miles down. You know, we don't know what the universe is saving us from. So when we look at these things as, oh, they're so bad. I can't believe this is happening to me. How do you know it's bad? That's again, that goes back to your perception and reality. Like that's your perception. Your perception is I missed all these lights. Now I might be cutting it short, getting to work, but that's your perception. But what is reality? Reality might be, oh, you missed all these lights because if you would have hit these lights on time, <laughs> the third light you would have gotten to, somebody would have ran that their red light, T-bones you, and now you're in a whole different predicament, right? And that's why I say like this stoic philosophy of just letting things exist, that there's not, some things aren't good, some things aren't bad, they just are what they are, and that's what we, we need to look at that for. So a little bit more about you know the father of Stoicism, Zeno. Zeno thought that you know grew up in Athens. He thought that most people in the city of Athens either suffered because they had desired what they did not have, or they feared losing what they already had. You know this pursuit of pleasure could never satisfy a human being because one would always be chasing the next thing. Um, you know, they desired or trying to hold on long to what it is that they may have obtained. You know, this pursuit of pleasure, you know, it's always that you want more, you want more, you want this, you want that, instead of just looking at what I have. You know, I, I talk about all the time, my favorite artist being J. Cole. J. Cole talks about in the song, Love Yours, like, you know, there's all these things out there that's always going to be better than what you have. There's always going to be these things out there that are that seem greater, that seem, you know, better than what it is that you already have. But if you just take a step back and look at your life from what it is and being like, yo, I'm healthy, I'm blessed, I got a roof on my head, I got clothes on my back, I am striving towards this goal. Yes, I want it. I want to achieve this. But if it doesn't happen, I will be okay. Life will still go on and I will be okay. You know, um, he preached... Zeno preached to achieve a state of enlightened apathy, um, meaning that apathy, sorry, enlightened apathy, meaning that he wanted people to find peace with things just as they are, not always wanting more out of your interest. This kind of allow he talks about how this allows people to be free from enslavement to one's passions, right? And I'm I'm first to admit that. I, at like one point, still, honestly, still working on it, was a slave to my passion, a slave to my craft, because like I mentioned at the top of the pod, you always, you got this goal, you have this vision, you have this dream, and you want it so bad, right? You want it so bad, and you're doing anything and everything in your power to make it happen. Well, like I said, we can control everything leading up to the outcome. You can control how hard you work, 
how many hours you put in, how much you study, but simply, you know, we can't control the outcome. We can't control whether we obtain it or not. That's up to the universe. It's up to God. That's not up to us. And so when you come to a, a when you are a slave to these things, and just always wanting more out of life, more out of this, um, or you want to attain the the destination is way more important than the journey. That's why I think we get lost. And I've had to fight that battle myself sometimes being like, man, I know the journey is the most important part, but I want to figure out the destination, right? I want to, I want to accomplish the destination. And I've literally had that, that, uh, battle in my mind of being like, okay, Vans, you have to just focus on the journey. And then the other side of me being like, man, Vance, fuck that journey. Like we didn't, we're not walking this path just to walk it. And, but I had to keep bringing it, bringing it back and being like, no, like, Hey, it's, you will find happiness in just the journey. You will find happiness in the pursuit rather than the destination. So just focus on the journey itself and don't, get too caught up in obtaining it because you can't control it and if you're anything like me you hate you know being out of control of certain things and this is one of them knowing that i put like you can put your all into something and it still may, may happen like that it's a scary thought it's a scary thing to being like man i can put all my money into this business right and the business still fail like it's it's not an easy thing thought to you know it's not an easy thought to accept but it's one that it has to you have to be able to accept that when you go on this journey when you go on this life So I've talked a little bit on a podcast about uh, probably the most famous Stoic being Marcus Aurelius, um, fo- former Roman emperor. He's known as one of the, la- the last five great emperors. Um, you know, he had a, he had a book called Meditations. It wasn't even a book that he meant to publish. It was he wrote down his own thoughts, and then when he became you know when he died after he passed away, people they found it. They found basically this journal of him writing out his thoughts on you know stoicism on life in general and they published it they made it a book um i don't know how he would feel about that today knowing that his journal basically i mean it's helped probably a lot of people but knowing that his private journal that they they found was published and made into a into a book but he has these principles and you know some principles stuck out to me throughout the book one being he talks about showing up every single day. He talks about how you can build this lifestyle or you can build, you know, no matter what it is that you're trying to achieve, you show up every single day and you build your life action by action. We always hear it all the time that, you know, uh, when you build a house, it starts with the first brick and you can't get to the last brick until you start with the first brick. It's so funny. I, I was literally looking at you know, I was like at the last week when I was in the cities with some friends, I looked at this building. I'm like, man, could you imagine like getting paid to like build this building? You're on like the 27th floor, right? You're high, way up and high up in the air and you're going to build this building. Somebody's paying you for. And I'm just like, man. And I literally thought about it like, yo, they had to start from the ground up. You know, what I mean, you can't start the building halfway up in the air. You have to start it from the ground up and how much time that would take. And that's what Marcus really has talked about is building this mental endurance by showing up every day, building this. And when we talk about it in football, we talk about competitive stamina. I literally read this thing on Sean McVay, head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. I read this article about him the other day and it talked about, he had mentioned competitive stamina. He mentioned that something he does, and if you guys had Sean McVay, the youngest winning Super Bowl head coach in NFL history, he talked about how he would go into the into the film room or he would be at home or wherever he'd be watching film at and how he would watch film 
to get into the zone. Like sometimes it's not clicking, right? And you're just sitting there watching the screen. But he said he would watch it until time was no longer a concept, until he lost the concept of time. Like he didn't know what time it was. And he did that so that eventually when he got into the zone and you're just like watching the film, you're sitting there and he go immersed in the in watching this and getting better, he realized that the more he learned, the more he wanted to learn, right? The better he got, the better he wanted to be. So he kept watching it to com- to build that mental endurance, can build that that competitive stamina. Because he talked about it. The more he learned, the more he wanted to learn. Thus, the better coach he would be. And Marcus Aurelius talks about that thousands of years ago, and we still hear about it today. Is this, you know, hey, just showing up every day, no matter what the outcome may be. You have to show up. And lay this brick, brick by brick. Another thing he talked about was building voluntary hardship. So basically, going through things and putting yourself in a position that is is hard. Like you're doing hard stuff, you know, every single day. So that when hard things hit you in life, they don't just hit you by surprise. You know what I mean? If you are, you know... Uh, let's say you're in business. I don't want to keep using athletes because not everybody that watches this pod is an athlete. Let's say you're in business, right? And you are constantly asked to meet this quota. You have to meet this, I don't know, sales projection. You have to sell this amount of much, like this much of stuff uh, by the end of the quarter, right? And by you putting yourself in a position like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know what's realistic. I'm not going to, you know, if I got to sell 10,000 units of this, or ten thousand dollars of this, I'm gonna sell fifteen thousand, right? I'm gonna push myself to sell fifteen thousand dollars worth of this because if I push myself, if I give myself that hard goal, that hard task of doing that, maybe I hit it, maybe I don't. Maybe I hit nine thousand. Maybe I don't even hit the goal that they set for me. Maybe I hit thirteen thousand. But you setting this hardship is like okay, whatever the boss asks you to do, whatever your higher up asks you to do, they can no longer. It no longer, you know, hits you different because it's like, okay, I, I push myself harder than you could ever push me. So how, like, how could I be knocked off by this, right? David Goggins, the ex Navy SEAL, or uh, ex, I think you're just a Navy SEAL once you are a Navy SEAL. The Navy SEAL, he talks about it. He's like, every day I wake up and I don't want to do something, I push myself to do it because I know getting through that suck, getting through that pain, getting through that mental of just being like, man, I don't want to go on this eight mile run. Like, oh, man, I don't want to go work out today. He says he does it because he knows and he finds a different gear to make himself excited about that stuff because he knows that that hardship, it will push him past, you know, a different level than what anybody else could do. Like once he's done that, he's he's already broken, you know, he's already gotten to a mental aspect of like, okay, anything else that's thrown at me in life, you can't. It can't put me down. It can't destroy me because I'm already in the, the mindset of I'm going to put myself through hard stuff already. Voluntary hardship. And it's like I said, Marcus, I really has talked about this stuff thousands of years ago, but it's still relevant today. You know, it's how you build your mental strength. This is how you endure through, you know, hard times by, you know, whatever life throws at you. It won't affect you as much because you're already putting yourself through these things, you know. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but practicing the dichotomy of control, you know, having power over your mind and not over the outcome, you know, not worrying about outside things, just being like, okay, it's basically finding, finding, um, how do I put this? You find peace within the process, right? You find joy within what it is that you're doing. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a standard for my life, right? And the standard I live by is going to be no matter what, each and every day I'm gonna go out and chase my dream. I'm gonna put this many hours into it, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and being happy with the fact that you lived up to your standard. Not happy with the fact if I obtain the goal or not. It's I'm happy with my, that I lived up to my standard, right? My standard was I'm going to work out five days a week. 
um, once on the weekends. I'm going to, you know, eat this great. I'm going to do this. Yeah, you might have a goal of losing this much weight by the end of the month. It may, it may or may not happen, but guess what? You had more control over what you what you did. And if you did all the things that you said you were going to do, you did it right and you still didn't hit the goal, you should be happy about the fact that, hey, I did my best. I lived up to my standard. That's all I could do, right? That's all, that's all you could do. You can't control the number on the scale, but you can control what you did leading up to that number on the scale leading up to you stepping on the scale at the end of the month right and man that it, it's it's great stuff like i said it's easier said than done i'm i'm wholeheartedly first to say that's easier said than done but i think when we when we strive for this when we have this mindset of like all right i'm gonna fall in love with the process and i'm gonna try and live up to my standard i'm gonna control what i can control i'm gonna focus on what i can control and not stress and not worry about what it is I can't control then it makes life that much easier when you're striving for that you know Marcus, I really also had, you I mean, he had, he had 10 principles that he really went over, 10 principles, 10 main principles that, you know, I had found when I studied it, you know, some being, some that, you know, talked about like never playing the victim, practicing delayed gratification, ignoring naysayers, like we always talk about, like don't even worry about the haters, negative people in your life. Um, one he talked about was finding wise people to emulate. And this was important because, like I said, when I first got to college, <clears throat> when I first got to school, and I realized, like, okay, I'm um, I'm here now. I what do I? I can either waste these next, you know, what ended up being six years for two, you know, six and a half years to get my undergrad, master's, or I could strive and grow out of these. Because you'd be surprised, you'd be surprised how many people go in at 18 years old. And they leave at 23 and not, they haven't grown that much because they didn't go in with a mindset of like, okay, how can I get better? Um, or how can I not just doing the same things over and over? So I remember when I first got to school, emulating, you know, finding wise people to emulate. So I would research Jay-Z, Kobe Bryant. I started reading a lot more. I started diving into stuff like this that I never would have thought about I'd be doing. Like I never would have thought I'd be doing a podcast that... 17 years old i never thought i'd be when i was 17 i didn't think about that i didn't think about what stoic philosophy and all this stuff was i didn't think about being curious and learning about these things but here i am you know at 25 doing them because i'd found out that like it says finding wise people to emulate i found out that the the people i wanted to be like successful people were they stayed curious they stayed curious and they always wanted to learn more and more. You know, that was their thing. They always wanted to learn. I found that successful people read a lot. So I started reading, you know, and it. I think it's it's perfect for especially kids that grow up in an environment where they feel like they don't have many people to look up to. It's finding people, especially with social media nowadays, we have YouTube, we have google our hands we can study these people that we look up to study people that we want to be like finding their habits what do they do what do they like to do um, what do they stay away from and finding like how can we take those principles and put them into our lives right but really his last principle that he talks about and that i thought was great because I, you know, I've talked about a couple times in this podcast about being real with yourself and honestly, and honestly having a real examination of what your life is. You know, I use the the example all the time is like stopping the car, park, putting it in park, and lifting the hood up and just checking under the hood to make sure everything is okay. Really reviewing how your, you know, your journey is going. And he talks about, you know, his last principles: honestly review your day. Like sit down at the end of the day and ask yourself, okay, what did I do productive today? What could I have done better? Giving yourself a pat on the back for what you did do. Like I said, living up to your standard. 
but then also like honestly being being real with yourself like where could i be better at where could i grow what areas can i grow in what did i do great today what did i do great this week um is there anything i said i was going to do that i didn't do just having that mindset and being like and like you said honestly reviewing your day you know he talks about these are the characteristics of a rational soul self-awareness self-examination and self-determination you know self-awareness being aware of like what are my what are my strengths what are my weaknesses how can I get better at those? Um, self-examination, we just talked about is being like, okay, did I truly give it my all today? At the end of the day, like, did I truly squeeze everything I had out of this 24? And was I smart with how I use my 24 hours? You know, and then self-determination. I think we talked about in the last pod too, of just being like, you know, there's at some point you have to get rid of the motivation. At some point it's just discipline and being like, okay, it's internal now everything in me how i'm gonna figure this out is how i'm gonna push myself each and every day on a daily basis not just you know it has to be yourself it has to be self-determined self you know discipline it can't be other people i can't be doing this for other people i can't wait till somebody else you know takes the first step for me to take the first step i have to get up every day and be self-determined in my own mindset right and I mentioned it a couple times before and I just keep going back to it about like, man, it's crazy that he talked about these things thousands of years ago, right? Building voluntary hardship, reviewing your day, um, you know, controlling what you can control, you know, counting on yourself, showing up every day. It's crazy that he talked about these things in a time where he was an emperor. Like we don't even have emperors anymore, right? Talk about these times when he literally, if he wanted to, you know, slaughter you know thousands of people for just breathing the wrong way he could have done that right he lived in that time and air where war people were dying um you know life expectancy was probably like 35 years old he lived in these times and he's having these thoughts about life writing his personal journal and realizing like man you know like Zeno said we are slaves to you know our passion people that lived in these bc times and i was thinking about like the the game assassin's creed because this is like the time that they lived in um i think about that all the time of being like man these people lived in these times and they were thinking about things that still apply to today in 2022 you know like Zeno said being a, a slave to your passion and what a lot of us are is that we, I was thinking about this the other day, is that life has almost normalized being a workaholic, right? And I'm, I'm guilty of it too, of just being like, man, I got to go, go, go. I got to strive for more and for more until, you know, I squeeze everything I got out of this life. Life has almost normalized that instead of just being like, yo, it's okay to, you know, rest. It's okay to have this goal, yes, and like you talked about, but at the end of the day, what happens if you don't obtain it? Life just doesn't, you know, does life just end after you don't obtain the goal? Because, like, there's so many people, you think about how many people, there's only so many professional athletes. There's only so many doctors. only so many, like, there's, you have these things in life that you strive for but at the end of the day what happens if you don't obtain it what happens if it doesn't come true you know we can control everything we can control up into the point but what happens if we don't obtain it <laughs> what's going to happen next you know at some point we have to just accept the fact that hey we have a standard that we want to live up to you know life is what it is it's some things aren't good some things aren't bad they just are what they are and that's how we have to look at things and just being like hey the journey is the journey we're gonna enjoy it we're going to do everything we can on this journey but the destination whether we reach it or not is out of our control so 
Man, I'm going to end on that. Appreciate y'all tapping into another episode of the Advanced Partners Pod. If you made this far, please go do so. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I got to start putting that at the start of the podcast. I keep forgetting. But, man, appreciate y'all tapping in. Until next time. Peace.